Hey everybody, I'm going to go over assignment number eight with you. I'm not going to fill everything out for you, but I'm going to demonstrate some things so that you can fill it out. I'm also going to go kind of out of order just for um, making it more efficient for demonstrations. So first of all, mixtures can be put into any one of these three categories, solutions, suspensions, and colloids. So one of the things that I had you look up was what is a solute and a solvent? So let's start with that. Okay, so all mixtures are made up of a solute and a solvent. So solutes are substances that can be dissolved, while the solvent is the, the substance that's actually doing the dissolving. So I also had you look up, well, which what's the best solvent out there? What's the most common one? And that's water, but why is that? Well, it's because it's really polar, so it's able to pull apart molecules very easily and dissolve them. <clears throat> okay, so let's start with a definition of each of these. So, solutions are mixtures of two or more substances, but so are suspensions, two or more substances, and colloids, two or more substances. The difference is how they actually look to our eyes. So, solutions are homogeneous. So that prefix means they look the same to our eyes. So the solution on the left is salt water, and you can't tell that there's salt dissolved in there. It all looks like one substance, so it's homogeneous. Suspensions are heterogeneous because of how they look. So that's some muddy water there, and we can definitely tell that there's mud settled at the bottom and even some that's in the water still. That's heterogeneous because we can tell that they look very different our, to our eyes. It looks different. Colloids are homogeneous as well. So here is some water, and it's got some milk that's actually dissolved in it. And so those particles of milk are staying in solution. They're not settling to the bottom. So we can see that it's homogeneous. It looks the same from top to bottom and throughout but we could actually see the particles a little bit. It's kind of cloudy. Okay, so let's talk about particle size. So in solutions, we'll get rid of those. In solutions, our particle sizes are very tiny. So they're so small that we can't even see them when they're dissolved, like in that salt water. And they're gonna stay dissolved. They're not gonna sink to the bottom. So we have water as the solvent and salt is the solute. We could even do something like add some food coloring to this. And mix that up a little bit. So if we look at this from the side, it's it looks the same throughout. So all those particles, now we have salt and we have food coloring in there, and it's still a homogeneous solution because of how it looks to our eyes. But those particles are so small that they won't ever fall to the bottom. It'll stay green forever. When we have a suspension, our particles are so big, like the dirt particles, they'll sink to the bottom. So we have huge particles. Colloid particles are somewhere in the middle. So like the milk, they're medium-sized particles. They're big enough that we can actually see them, but they're still small enough that they won't fall to the bottom. It'll stay cloudy like that forever. Okay, skipping around a little bit. So one of the things I had you look up was electrolytes. So some, of, some solutes, including some of these, can actually be electrolytes. And so what does that mean? So electrolytes are ionic compounds that when they dissolve, they can conduct electricity. So in this example, I'm using the salt. So you can see that the little black dots are sodium ions. So the sodium and chlorine has broken down into Na pluses and Cl minuses. And so the little black dots are the Na pluses and the orange ones are the Cl minuses. And so these right here are electrodes 
that are going to be attached to a battery. So a battery has a positive side and it has a negative side. So I've attached two batteries together and attached a little LED to that. And when these two wires touch, the LED comes on. So if I put this in something that has an electrolyte in it, like salt water, then we should see that LED come on. Like that. So what's happening there? So the electricity is traveling from one electrode to the other electrode using these ions as a pathway. And so when the electricity travels from one electrode to the other, that's when we see the light bulb come on. If we tried that in milk, so let me do the same thing with milk. Here's our milk. I'm going to put that in there. See, the light bulb doesn't come on. So, electricity cannot travel from milk molecule to milk molecule, and that's because they are molecules. They don't have any charges on them. So they do not conduct electricity. They are non-electrolytes. So electrolytes are ionic compounds that break apart into ions, and they can carry electricity. Okay. So let's look at something called the Tyndall effect on our paper. So the Tyndall effect is just another way to test what kind of solution, or sorry, what kind of mixture you're actually dealing with. So I've got a light and I'm gonna shine it through the side. So here's my light. I'll turn that on, I'm gonna shine it through the side. So you can see the light coming out the other side, but we can't see the light in the solution. That's because those particles are so small. They won't reflect the light. Now if we look at the milk, we can actually see the light beam in the cup. That's the Tyndall effect right there. The, the particles of milk are big enough to scatter the light, but remember they're small enough that they're not gonna sink to the bottom. We don't really use this test on suspensions because we can see the particles with our eyes. We don't need to test. This is really to tell the difference between solutions and colloids. So there's the Tyndall effect, and in solutions, no Tyndall effect. Okay, one last thing for um, testing mixtures is separating them with a filter. Can they be separated with a filter? So I've got just a uh, a funnel with the coffee filter in it into a cup. And so the reason you would use this test is because this can tell you how small or large the particles are. So let's take our salty green water here and pour that through the filter. If this could be separated by a filter, then we should see the water turn clear. But it doesn't it stays green, and that's because those particles are so small that they go right through the filter. Now what about the salt? So I could test that again, right? I could put my conductivity tester in there. Put that in a new cup, so I can test this with a conductivity tester. Does the salt also go through? So it does, the light comes on. So the salt and the green particles all went through the filter. So can solutions be separated by a filter? No, they can't. Okay, let's try something else. Let's try the colloid, the milk. So we would again expect this water to turn clear if the filter was able to separate the milk from the water. So it's looking pretty cloudy. There's still some green in there from the last one, but so we can see how cloudy that is still. So the milk goes through. That's how small those milk particles are. They go right through the filter. And we should still be able to see the Tyndall effect too. So we can see the beam of light going through that liquid. Now, of course, the muddy water 
would be very easy to separate with the filter. We've even done this in the lab before, so we'll stir that up a little bit. So we would expect the filter to separate the dirt and the water, and the water should come out nice and clear. So we could see that happening now. Compare the two. Okay, so we've got a definition of these. We've got particle sizes. We've done the filtration. Examples should be very easy for you to look up. Uh, you can use some of my examples. We've seen the Tyndall effect. We've defined solutes and solvents. We've defined electrolytes and non-electrolytes and seen that they can conduct electricity if they're electrolytes and don't if they're non-electrolytes. Again, examples should be very easy for you to find.